since um, the squash vine borer lays their eggs individually or sometimes you might find four or five eggs but they'll be usually spread apart they won't be tightly packed together you need to have some pretty good eyes as you can see this plant's pretty small and from a distance it's kind of hard, it's hard to spot but there's an egg right at the base of the plant they'll usually lay them at ground level or a little bit above I hope you can see it there's a single egg right there See if I can get a better close-up of it. But just judging by the size of this plant, if I let that one egg hatch, it would probably kill this small little plant. It takes them about um, a week from the time they're laid till the time they're, they hatch, maybe a little more than a week. Then it literally takes hours for them to tunnel into the plant, into the stem of the plant. So if you're trying to catch them while they're actually on the plant before they tunnel in, you, you don't have much of a window. Another way you can try to keep um, the borers off your plant is to create a barrier. It works especially well when they're small but it will work when they're larger too. What I've done is brushed away some of the soil and now I'm going to put this little piece of aluminum foil around the plant. I won't uh, pack it too tightly. I don't want to restrict the plant's growth but it will be a barrier. Then after I have it wrapped I'll just put some of that dirt back Just like that. Another thing you can do is to put a yellow container. It could be a bowl or a little bucket like I have here or anything that will hold a little uh, soapy water. And since they're attracted to the color yellow, sometimes uh, especially during their real active season they'll actually fall down into that bucket and it's a good way to monitor how active they are too this is something that I haven't tried until recently but it's going to be part of my strategy next year I've even heard of people using a yellow frisbee so just anything that will hold water and I put just a tiny bit of soap uh, in the water. Another method to uh, reduce their impact on your garden is to not plant squash or pumpkin in the same place uh, year after year. For instance, I have this pumpkin growing here. I wouldn't want to plant a pumpkin or a squash here next year. If you're sure there's a borer inside uh, your stem, one thing you can do is take a real tiny wire. This is probably a little bit too big, but it's what I used. I had one right here in the base of the, this stem in this pumpkin plant, and I was able to dig it out uh, and kill it without doing any more damage to the plant than causing this leaf to die this leaf stem but I'll show you the quick clip right now of uh, what that little one looked like he was just getting started good and he would have done some more damage if I hadn't have got him out I was out here looking at my pumpkins and I saw a, what looked like a borer breathing hole at the base of this stem here and I probed around with a little piece of uh, wire and look what I found there's a little borer. 
Looks like I poked a little hole in him. Along with using a yellow container with uh, soapy water, you can also use uh, commercially available yellow sticky traps. And those will catch a few of the moths. It, if you kill the moths, you will uh, stop the cycle immediately. So killing those whenever possible is a good idea. Since the eggs take about a week to hatch, another strategy you can use is to spray the base of the plants with uh, some sort of insecticide like a, a spray or a dust, something that will uh, kill the worms when they hatch and already be on the stem. Uh, so when they start to tunnel into the stem, they'll eat that and uh, be killed. You can also plant varieties that um, the borers don't especially like. They aren't their preferred uh, squash, like the butternut squash and the green striped uh, kushaw. Uh, those are some that they will pass over if they have uh, other squash that are available. Since vine borers um, do actually have a preference on what types of squash they like better than others, you can use that to your advantage also by planting a trap crop. If you have, for instance, a small field with uh, zucchinis that you want to grow and harvest, you can plant around the perimeter, you can plant one of their favorites, uh, Blue Hubbard squash, and they'll be drawn to the Blue Hubbard. Uh, before they get to the zucchini and you can save your zucchini that way if that's what your primary uh, crop is. One thing I'm thinking about trying next year is row covers uh, over the squash. There are two problems with uh, row covers. Eventually you're going to need to remove the row row cover so the uh, pollinators can get to the uh, squash to pollinate or you will have to hand pollinate but you can keep your squash uh, pretty much borer free up until you remove the uh, row cover another problem with the row cover is you want to make sure to not plant them in the same place you did last year. You might have a few bores in the soil already and if those come up and they have row cover over them you've trapped the uh, <laughs> pest in your crop. Another way to kill the bores is to figure out a way to get uh, BT uh, to the where the boar is feeding and one way that people do that is uh, to inject into the stem. BT is a bacteria that will kill the boars but spraying it on the outside uh, won't do any good on the borers that have already tunneled into the plant. You have to figure out how to get it to the borer. I'm guessing that you could probably cut it open like you would doing uh, surgery to, to remove one and probably introduce the uh, bacteria that way or you can inject it. There's a couple of them active. There's one that's going into the, yeah, well, there's four active ones. That's why this plant didn't make it. As you can see, when it's uh, multiple borers, and if you're trying to fish them out or cut them out, uh, 
you got to make sure you got them all if you leave any uh, it won't do any good so trying to cut them out isn't exactly my method of choice but if you decide to do that and you for instance if you knew there was a bore in here you would just make a cut in the stem and pry it open and dig the bore out uh, and then what you can do is cover up the stem with soil uh, so the wound will heal better but like I said that's it works a lot of the time if you just have a single bore but you got to be sure you got them all or it won't work it doesn't take very long to figure out that this squash isn't doing very well it's just a young one and I haven't taken a real close look at it yet but I'm pretty sure it's probably uh, the vine borer that's getting it so I'm gonna pull it out of the ground so we can look at it and this stuff right here where my the end of my thumb is looks like sawdust that's where the boar is pooping and right there where, where it's coming out of the stem my guess is that there's a little tiny boar just inside of that I'm going to try to cut this open now and we'll take a look and see if we can find him my guess is this plant would not have made it if I would have left it so I'm just going to sacrifice it now that I've got it split open it's not hard to figure out why this plant's not doing too good it's got a pretty good size bore right there just munching away at this plant and this is a good time to mention when you have the plant that dies from a bore or borers get rid of it don't leave it in the ground or these little things will go down into the ground and they'll overwinter and then come out next year and wreak havoc again so you need to get rid of them as soon as your plant dies or even when you've given up on it and you're pretty sure it's going to die get rid of the plant and there's one more thing you can do even after the growing season is over and that's to uh, turn the soil over a couple inches deep where you had your squash planted. Uh, the squash vine borers will go down into the soil and that's where they'll, they'll over, overwinter. So if you turn that soil over, uh, it leaves them vulnerable to predators uh, such as birds and it also can leave them more vulnerable to cold weather which might kill them so if you can get them closer to the surface uh, it might get rid of a few and I think you just have to go a few inches deep but that's one more thing <laughs>